Hello, maestros. My name's Mon, and we're here to maximize our workflows. This episode, I'll be talking about some of the extra features that I haven't talked about yet, but would like to now. We'll be talking about some groups, triggering palettes, and some essential macros that you should have at this stage. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Command Shift N to make a new group. I'll be calling my sharing helper. If you look over here, you can see that I have some sweet little icons for my groups. And you can set that by going to your, making sure you have your group selected, going to your icon right here, clicking that have it to select it. Go to your window menu and then select icon chooser. And then you get a nice little window here, your icon chooser. You can choose from the internal icons that Keyboard Maestro provides, or you can choose one of the icons from your applications or you can try your hand at creating your very own icon. But for my purposes here, I'm just gonna go with my pedestrian sign. All right, so if you look back up here, you can see that I have five groups that are labeled apps. And this is because one of the great features in Keyboard Maestro is that you can have macros that are application specific. So they only work in specific applications. And you can do that by selecting your group again, and then going to your first option here, the available in all applications, and click that and change it to being only available in the following applications, or you can select being available in all except the following applications. So I'm just gonna select available in the following applications for now, hit my little add button, and then you can choose from this list here, go to your recent, or you can have a larger selection by going to more, or other to browse to it. I'm just gonna be using stickies for my example here. I'm just gonna make a new macro to use. I'll be calling it Snap. It's gonna be in the insert text and it's gonna be inserting Snap. All right, and I'm gonna set my trigger to my F10 as usual. And just a side note, I haven't talked about this yet, so I'm gonna do it now. The function keys on your Mac aren't set up to work as standard function keys. You actually have to change the setting in your system preferences. And you can do that by selecting your little Apple here, going to system preferences, choosing keyboard, make sure you have keyboard selected, and make sure this little checkbox is checked. And it says use all F1, F2, et cetera, keys as standard function keys. And you can use this option when you want to use the special uh, printed features on each key. You have to hold down the function key and then hit F1, F2, etc. to use your volume buttons and such. So yeah, that's how you can do that. All right. So you have that and let's go back and look at our applications here. You can see that I have two groups here, two groups that are labeled Premiere. And that's because of my triggering. There are different methods of triggering, and I use I use a little bit of all of them. So I have my app specific macros here assigned to Premiere, and I assign them to my input device. So I don't really remember all of these shortcuts. I just remember where the button is, and then things that I don't use as frequent, I have it assigned to my floating palette here. Now, what's the floating palette, you ask? Well, let me show ya. That's where our second option comes in. So select our group again, and then instead of being always activated, you can switch it to being activated or deactivated when you hit, hit a key combination, or you can, my favorite is shows a palette until so it'll always show a palette until something happens. Either you're turning it on and off with a key, key combination, a shortcut, or click, clicking your status menu. And I usually just have this on. So if I accidentally turn it off, I can just go back in my status menu and then turn it back on. But right now you can see that my pop-up, my floating palette isn't anywhere in sight because it's only available in the following applications. So I have to switch it over back to my stickies here. And then I go, oh, snap, right there. Then it works. Switch it back to Keyboard Maestro. 
not there. Switch it back. Oh, and you can always position it to a space that doesn't really interfere. So it's right there, really easy when I need to. So I have my macros that I don't use as much in my floating palette. And things that I rarely use, I use my conflict palette. And that is when I have, you see here, I have a little folder here, my, a group here that's called F9, because everything that I use like once a day, I will assign to my everything to just F9. So I hit F9, and then I have a conflict palette up here, and you could hit the number one on your keyboard to do this, number two, three, four, five, and six, or you can do, you can see that um, some, well, some of these letters are uh, a little bit grayer, a little bit darker than the rest, so you could hit that as well. So if I hit Q right now, since there are two Qs, it'll jump to the, you know, another, it will simplify the list and just keep all your Qs, and then you can hit E to do this one, or I to do that one, or you can do the one and two positioning again, which is pretty nice. So that's how you do some triggering. Let's see if what else I should talk about. So we got our floating palette and our conflict palette. So um, let me also talk about the, uh, you got your floating palette that is app specific, but you can also have a global macro palette and that is set by switching it to, by setting it within your macro as opposed to in your group. Because if you set it in your group, then you're setting a floating palette. But if you set it in your macro, then you are setting it to your global macro palette. And your global macro palette looks like this little guy. It's this little guy that you can hover over and then you can see the options for. Remember, it's a global one, but if your global one is set to a specific group, then it won't pop up globally. It will only pop up within the application in this floating palette here. All right, a little side note to keep track of, but hopefully you won't come across that. But if you do, you'll remember what I said, or you can come back here and rewatch this and you'll remember what I said. All right, so there is that. Let's talk about the essential, essential macros that you should have at this stage, and that is your search trigger. So let's do a quick little review of your triggering. You can trigger by your input device that is application specific. Things that overflow, you can activate through your palette, but things that are really, really infrequent, then you can use your conflict palette. And things that are really, really infrequent, then you can just search for them by using your search action. And we'll make it real quick. Command N and make a new macro, and we just call search trigger. Go to your no action and just type in macro, and then go to all actions, and you can see trigger macro by name. Drop that in. And I have set mine to, since I don't use as much, it's okay for me to stretch my thumb, so I go command backspace. So it's like, boom, command backspace. It will give me a nice little search window. And you can always change this colors if it's too blue for you. And that's pretty nice. So you have that. A really good way to trigger. And just as a side, little side note, side macro that I think is really fun and everyone should have. This is your clipboard history. Clipboard. This story action, and then I'll just go clipboard, and then you can drag in your history so witcher. And I set this one too, so this one's not as far of a stretch since I actually use this quite a bit. So I go option backspace. So I hit option backspace, you get a sweet little history of all your clipboard items. And if you want to add them in, just, you know, select it, double click, you know, just double click it and it will paste it in right there where you last left off. 
So yeah, that is some of the extra features that I haven't addressed yet, but that I thought were really fun. And you should know. Hopefully you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.